water. Residents in the village of Fonda have been asking that question for weeks now. A boil water advisory was put in place back on June 27th because of sediment leaving the water brown and even smelling unpleasant. One source telling CBS 6 tonight there's a chance that boil water order is lifted very soon as long as official water tests come back clean. As of yesterday, the village says progress has been made on the filtration system. Storage tanks are filled and sediment or turbidity has been reduced. Now it's the chlorine levels that are keeping the boil water order in place there. More tests will need to be done at homes and businesses before the order can be lifted. Still, we're bringing you neighbors' concerns. The response from officials in Montgomery County and why the story in this small village is about so much more. Access to clean drinking water, a right, but not a guarantee. Stay with us for that half hour special next. Imagine what we would consider water on a good day in Fonda. When New Yorkers turn on the tap, they deserve to know that what's coming out is clean and safe to drink. I just don't trust it. If there's anything that is going to hurt you, trust us. We will let you know. I bought this house about a year and nine months ago. And since I've left, lived here, there have been five or six boil water advisories. You can never have too much transparency when it comes to clean drinking water. So they're just trying to wait for the water to clear itself. They're not fixing the problems. Fonda, New York, the county seat of Montgomery County, population less than 700, a small village with a big story. June 27th, 2024, a boil water advisory sent out for users of the village water system serving roughly 1,100 residents in Fonda and the town of Mohawk. Days turned to weeks, and what would have been an inconvenience turned into a potential public health crisis. CBS 6 was first to bring you the concerns from neighbors in Fonda two weeks after the notice first went out. Discolored, foul-smelling water. It's a concerning nuisance for homeowners in the area that's years in the making. Now we're bringing those concerns to village officials, county leaders, and experts, and bringing you comprehensive coverage. CBS 6 investigates what's in the water. When it's weeks of it and you're spending, you know, $50, $60 on just water, that's a huge chunk of our food budget. You wouldn't think you'd have to worry, like, is the water okay or am I going to get sick? Since June 27th, people throughout the village of Fonda and the town of Mohawk have been stuck under a boil water notice, forcing residents to buy water or boil it. Makes me feel terrible. I'm trying to raise three kids in this town. You're trying to take a bath? Keep your mouth shut. Close your eyes. Don't get anything in there. You could get sick. There's no way to raise your children. They're afraid of the bath. That's not how you want your kids to feel. At times, the water is so brown, I can't do a load of clothes. You turn that bath water on, and when you're getting sediment coming out, brown, you know, brown water, it's, it doesn't really make you feel clean that you're taking a bath, I guess. Officials say in the middle of the night, the filtration plant emptied out the village water tank at the reservoir, causing a filtration plant failure. This causing elevated turbidity levels, meaning the amount of suspended particles like sediment, plankton, or organic byproducts. Neighbors call the boil water notices a chronic problem. This is kind of an ongoing issue where every year they are putting us on a boil water advisory, uh, actually multiple times. Combined data from the Department of Health and the Village of Fonda website revealed 10 boil water notices since 2020. Water service customers also say the water is unreliable. It's within the duty of a municipal water system to provide its citizens with clean and safe water. It works, then it doesn't. Even if it does come out clean, do you still trust that water? I do not, um, to be honest with you, because again, we're never notified of when things like this happen. The village conducts regular water tests each year. CBS 6 collected our own water sample and took it in for testing. We'll have those results ahead, compare them to the village's tests, and find out what they mean for your health. The people of Fonda are no strangers to boil water advisories and discolored water coming from their taps. While filming this program, Mayor Bill Peeler reminded us of a story that we did eight years ago on this very issue. Here's that report filed by former CBS 6 reporter Cody Holyoke. In August of 2016, you'll see it wasn't a new issue even back then. Like most of us, Ron Stock expects to see clean water when he turns on the tap. So imagine his surprise when he found this Monday morning. The water looked like 
you hooked your coffee maker to the faucet. It was that brown. It was that dark. Ron says the water ran brown for hours, ruining filters throughout his house and staining his white sheets in the washer. So I went through a whole bucket of OxyClean. I went through half a gallon of Clorox just to get him back to here. And these spots, they run all the way across the bed. It's not the first time. Ron and his neighbors tell me they've been dealing with dirty water for years. This was after two months' use. That's the filter out of my drinking water system. And it's when they put it in, it's pure, pure white. Mohawk's town supervisor, Ed Bishop, lives just down the block. He tells me his town gets much of its water from the village of Fonda. And he says algae building up at the reservoir prompted crews to flush one of the lines. And when they flush the system, sediment rises and we get dirty water. Um, it's, it's, it's not new, but in, this week it's as bad as it's ever been. The deposits, mostly made up of iron, are just part of the problem. But you can see the thinning of the walls. Fonda's mayor, Bill Peeler, tells me the pipes are aging and says there's just not enough money coming in to fix the system. Those small municipalities need help. Um, and it has to be something that's not clever, but something that has substance and that can be really worked with to accomplish what we need to accomplish. In the meantime... If you're not happy with your service, then by all means, dig a well. You know, that may be a better solution for you in the, in the short term. Customers are hoping it doesn't come to that. We'd really like to see the water straightened out. I don't think that should be a huge issue. The mayor's suggestion to residents in 2016 dig a well, but only applying to those in the town of Mohawk, just over the village of Fonda border. Folks don't have that option. A village ordinance expressly prohibits well water, regardless an expensive solution with the financial burden placed on homeowners. The New York State Department of Environmental Conservation has a great tool showing different projects across the state. Digging a well requires a permit. These icons indicate the completed projects. As you can see, several are completed outside the village of Fonda border in the town of Mohawk, but nobody took up Mayor Peeler's suggestion back in 2016. In fact, most of these projects were done well before then. So they're just trying to wait for the water to clear itself. They're not fixing the problem. So next time it rains, here we are again with brown water that stinks, that nobody wants to use, and they don't care. Bill Peeler has been mayor of Fonda since 2012, a lifelong resident. He says he can remember back to when the village's water system was installed back in the 1980s. When it was put in, it wasn't state of the art. It was state of the art for us at the time. I remember it very well. Um, back in those days, you would have to put iron out in your shirts constantly, if you, especially white, and hope it got out. At the heart of the water crisis, aging infrastructure. And CBS6 has found out that the village has been handed millions of dollars to fix it. So where's the change? It's improving. Um, it's going to take time. And, you know, a number of years ago, that's what we told them. You know, we got to get funding. Since 2017, the village has been slowly putting millions in state funding to work. The water project projected to cost $3.6 million. Fonda has the money and is using it. So far, according to village board meeting minutes, the board has approved nearly $1 million worth of checks to contractors since late 2021 for grant funding work. Mayor Peeler admits government projects just don't come together as quickly as privately funded ones. Government doesn't move that way. If you start off a project, you're talking a minimum two years to probably get it actually to construction. Um, you know, this has been going on, I think, three to five years from that ballpark um, that we've been working on this. So. Working on the now moving to the water plant, okay. you know, so we, you know, it's not completed yet. Fonda's water system services a small population. And while local officials assure us of the water safety, if things were to truly go wrong, the effects could be much wider reaching. Bill Nair is a fifth generation farmer in Fonda, his farm just outside of village limits. He buys water for his home, but uses municipal water for his dairy cows. They drink from troughs constantly refilled with hundreds of gallons of water a day. If you were required to boil it, would that frustrate you? How would that affect your farm and your business? We wouldn't be able to, I would imagine. 
or being possible to boil everything. Bill tells us he's never seen any adverse health effects in his cows. And that's good news because the milk they produce gets shipped 60 miles away to Chobani, the yogurt company, distributing products nationwide, America's leading yogurt brand. A Chobani spokesperson tells CBS 6 they regularly test the milk they get from dairy co-ops, making sure it meets quality requirements and the milk is pasteurized before it's used. Stay with us. CBS 6 tested a water sample from a home tap in the village of Fonda. Those results when our What's in the Water special returns. I kids wanted macaroni and cheese. And I'm sitting here, I know I boil it. I know it's going to boil. But then I pour the water in and if it's off colored or I think I see something floating in it, I still don't want to make their food in it. The Village of Fonda Water Department has made the last five years of water quality reports available to the public online. In 2020, tests found there was an elevated level of organic carbon or decaying vegetation, likely from plants or algae. This alone is not a health hazard, but it can create other risks. The Village of Fonda uses chlorine to disinfect its water, a common practice for municipal water supplies. You can smell chlorine after this a lot of time. You can smell strong chlorine scent. And those organic carbon compounds create the perfect environment for chlorine byproducts to form. These byproducts, called trihalomethanes or THMs, include the chemical chloroform. They've been linked to cancer in animal studies and even in humans. Fonda Water officials cite EPA regulations pointing to just how minimal these risks are compared to the benefits of disinfecting water. While the amount in most drinking water sources is low, long-term exposure through ingestion or contact may be cause for concern. Those THMs were found at elevated levels in Fonda's water in 2021 and again in 2022. 2022's report also included elevated levels of lead, which generally can be linked to the service pipe connecting buildings to water mains and other possibly dated fixtures within a home. Again, in 2023, tests found elevated levels of organic carbon, but no adverse effects. From 2020 to 2023, tests also showed the water's odor exceeded expectations. And while it has no adverse health effects, it's considered an important quality factor in the drinkability of water. Next time it rains, here we are again with brown water that stinks. And no amount of boiling water will get rid of the ruddy brown color caused by suspended sediments. At times there's so much sediment in the water, the filters get clogged up. On July 15th, the village of Fonda started a two-week pilot study to manage water conditions at the plant in partnership with engineers, chemists, and the Department of Health. That same day, CBS 6 collected a water sample from a private residence connected to the village water system. Have you ever tested your water before? Um, no, we've never tested the water since we lived here, so this will be really interesting to find out what's in it. We took it to the Capital Region Environmental Laboratory in Red Sleer. results a clean slate our water sample tested negative for e coli and came in below the minimum levels for color sediment odor and other minerals like iron there was no residual chlorine at the time of the lab test as far as this test result goes the water was deemed safe and potable with all of this information, we want to put some things into perspective. While compounds found in Fonda's water have been linked to colorectal cancers and other health issues, we found no evidence of this being the case here. The New York State Department of Health tracks health indicators by county. Montgomery County residents are only slightly more likely to be diagnosed with colorectal cancer than the state average. And low birth rates, another possible side effect of THMs, were no more likely to occur. The water here is something we're paying for, yet right now we're not being delivered a product. This trust from Fonda Water customers after years of having boil water notices multiple times a year. Yes, this is um, the longest that I've experienced. I know that the water department is doing everything it can, and I, it's very frustrating. 
frustrating for everybody, but they're doing it. They really are yeah. working hard every single day. These filtrations had shut down and uh, our tank was empty. Mayor Bill Peeler says typically the water operators would be notified immediately if there was an issue with the filtration plant, but a non-village employee was out mowing and accidentally cut the communications line. There seems to be an air of distrust out there. If there's anything that is going to hurt you, trust us. We will let you know. Um, and you wouldn't see me drinking the water. Um, and I do drink the water. I drink my coffee every day. The village began distributing water to residents Saturday, July 13th, two weeks after the boil water notice was issued. Two days later, the mayor held a tour and discussion with officials and experts to review the water filtration process and emergency responses. That same day, the village began a two-week pilot study to test a new treatment chemical, collaborating with engineers, chemists, and the New York State Department of Health. On July 17th, the village announced they would begin distributing water on weekdays. It's frustrating, but, you know, we can only hope that what we're doing today is going to make it even better, you know, in the future for everyone. This is not an issue that can be fixed overnight. It's a long-term project. What's being done to help this issue? Well, Montgomery County right now is working with the village to offer whatever assistance we can. And one of the things that we've found is that communication is something that we all have to work on, both internally and externally. Montgomery County Executive Robert Patel agrees communication needs to be worked on, as do residents we spoke with. The only reason I was notified of it is because one of my neighbors actually, you know, had sent me a text message letting me know. Village of Fonda officials recommend recommend registering for the Montgomery County Sheriff's Department Hyper Reach and Village of Fonda's email system. Residents can also look to the Village of Fonda's official website, but another website with almost the same name is helping provide transparency. We do a great job at watering plants and hanging flowers from the light poles. A very poor job watering the people. I think the most important thing leadership and our community needs to focus on is transparency. Many of our meetings throughout the year are held remotely. I created the six main issues that we faced as a village. And why take matters into your own hands to help create this for the community? For me, I think a community is only as strong as its voice. And we have a lot of voiceless people. They don't feel comfortable in public. They don't feel comfortable speaking to authority. They don't feel comfortable asking for help. We're proud. We're an agriculture community here in Montgomery County. Um, and I think someone who's willing to take the steps to create something visible so they don't feel like their screams are being yelled in the dark. It's the closest we get. Our What's in the Water special is back after this break, highlighting other drinking water crises, the worst case scenarios we've seen play out right here in the Capital Region. You know, every New Yorker has a constitutional right to clean water. But we know across the state there are so many threats to clean drinking water. In late 2022, Fonda Water Works notified residents of elevated lead levels found in some homes and buildings. Elevated lead levels were included as a violation status in the city's 2022 water quality report from samples taken in August and September. Lead in water largely comes from sources close to the home, service pipes in older fixtures within the home's plumbing system. And despite being hard to detect without testing, the effects of water contaminated with lead are drastic. Lead poisoning can cause developmental problems for kids and adverse health effects for everyone. We saw extremes of lead contamination in the city of Troy just last year with pipe replacement work starting after months of frustration from residents. And the biggest injustice at hand is that the money was left unspent and unused over the last five years. While Fonda's lead levels are far from the extreme, it's just another sign of New York's aging water infrastructure, something federal partners have championed hundreds of millions of dollars in funding to upgrade. This is the first major federal grant of lead pipe money, but it ain't the last. Fighting for clean water, a constant battle.
But across, you know, cities and across the state, we also see just uh, more common examples of failing infrastructure. Water mains are constantly breaking. Sewage treatment plants are constantly having sewage overflows every time it rains. A senior director of Clean Water for <coughs> Environmental Advocates of New York, Rob Hayes, is committed to the fight. Unfortunately, in this past budget, Governor Hochul proposed cutting clean water funding by 50 percent. But luckily, we were able to make the case this funding is essential to get toxic chemicals out of our water to upgrade our water infrastructure and we were able to secure full funding for clean water in the final state budget. He says it's up to residents to advocate for themselves and their neighbors. You know, we've been glad to see that the village appears to be taking this issue very seriously. You have a right to know what's in their, your water and you have a right to know what the village is doing to protect your drinking water. It's been nearly a decade since the discovery of one of the worst water crises in recent memory. A toxic forever chemical known as PFOA found in the water supply of Hoosick Falls. It had been there for decades, leaking into the water supply since the 1950s, believed to have come from the nearby St. Gobain and Honeywell plants. I've had health issues for 30 plus years. That never made any sense. The crisis highlighted by Mark Hyman for Inside Your World Investigates. So it's truly the forever chemical. It's the forever chemical, absolutely. PFOA is linked to cancer, and Hoosick Falls residents did have an unusually high cancer rate. And the cancer that my dad had, there's another guy in Hoosick Falls that has it. You see about five of those a year throughout the country, and there's two here. For this small village, there's been progress. Construction started this spring on a new permanent water source transmission line. St. Cobain has been designated a federal Superfund site. And along with Honeywell, the company made to pay for water filters in the meantime. But for residents, the damage is done. Those with high PFOA levels will live with it for the rest of their lives. My family was poisoned. My child was poisoned. I have been poisoned. My friends and family have been poisoned. are right to worry about the safety in their tap water, as are every one of you watching from your homes and communities across New York. Unfortunately, clean water free from chemicals or natural contaminants is not a guarantee. Horror stories have played out across the nation. Flint, Michigan's water crisis brought to light a decade ago, turned back the clock, and Love Canal in Niagara Falls was one of the most well-known environmental disasters in U.S. history discarded toxic waste making its way into groundwater. By the time it was discovered in the late 1970s, the damage was already done. And in Rensselaer County, decades of harm from toxic forever chemicals leaked into the water supply of Hoosick Falls. It's our hope bringing concerns to the right people, like elected leaders and health officials, will help answer the question, what's in the water? And the story playing out in this small village can happen anywhere. For CBS 6 News, I'm Ashley Kusakaki.